Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today we're back on the topic of CMake, so let's get going. I just gotta create a branch and get on with it. You may have noticed that I haven't posted a video in a really long time, and just the brief explanation is I've been really busy at work. I work in NVIDIA now, it's been a blast. I've been having a lot of fun, so I'm not complaining at all, but that means things like my on-the-side YouTube channel take a back seat when there are other things going on. But today I finally wanted to get back into it and keep talking about CMake. I've been so thankful to see everyone's comments and questions and thoughts on uh, the comments on various videos. So today we're going to look at fetch content in CMake and compare that to external project and look at a couple examples to see when you might reach for one or another. So without further ado, let's go have a look at some code. So if you've seen any of my videos before, you know I love to point people to CMake's documentation because it's very comprehensive and can fill in details that I miss because uh, I'm not a perfect expert in everything. I can just point you to where the experts are. So with fetch content, we're going to compare fetch content with external project. So if you haven't seen my video on CMake Super Builds, you may want to check that out here. The real crux of that video was external project is a great tool to have isolated CMake builds that you string together to build lots of projects as one big project. That's why it's called a super build because it's building more than one project. Now external project can have more purposes than that, uh, but uh, fetch content is very similar to some of external project. So fetch content and external project share the how do you go get stuff. Um, they can clone Git repositories, they can go download zips. Um, the, there's multiple things you can do with both commands. And so when you're reading the, the documentation here on fetch content, if you've used external project, there's a bunch of things here that will be very similar and that's intentional. But the, the big difference between the two is that as we see right here, um, external project does all the downloading and mechanics of what it's going to do. It's going to do that at build time, where fetch content will fetch what it needs at CMake time, or that's what it's saying being made available immediately. So when you run CMake, fetch content will, while the CMake list is being executed, that's when it does the fetching. So there are some trade-offs to this. Uh, there are reasons to choose to uh, fetch stuff at CMake time versus fetching stuff at build time. And it's really up to you on how you want to organize this. But I, before we move on, I did want to make one comment on super builds. A couple of you asked me some questions about whether or not it makes sense to use fetch content and add subdirectory, um, like mentioned here, uh, as a way to do super builds. And I'll just briefly say that I think that can get really messy really fast because if you go to any CMake project and you do add subdirectory and then look at the CMake cache, everything in that CMake cache is about just that project. However, if you do add subdirectory on multiple subdirectories, that cache is gonna start getting really, really, really large with lots and lots of variables and it gets kind of unwieldy to make sure that none of those variables are conflicting with each other between projects, that none of them are um, being applied incorrectly to various subtrees. To me, I personally think that makes a lot more fragile of a super build than using external project, which makes sure that each project has CMake run on it in a completely isolated fashion in the right sequence. Is this always right or wrong to you to do? It's ultimately up to you how you want to use these tools, but uh, I find fetch content really useful um, for a couple of purposes, but not super builds specifically. So I figured the best way to demonstrate the differences in how I like to use fetch content versus external project would be to show you some examples. So let's go have a look. This first project that I want to show you is a project that's now up on GitHub and it's public. It's called the Anari SDK. And just real quick, Anari is a rendering interface library for 3D rendering engines to be connected to applications. It's a, a new Kronos API. Uh, Kronos is the one who makes things like uh, OpenGL and OpenCL and Vulkan, stuff like that. So Anari has a software development kit and 
Uh, there's a, a case where the SDK needed to go fetch some libraries that are header only or not libraries that need to be pre-built and fetch content ended up being the right tool for that job. So in the Unari SDK, there's an external directory which really just takes care of fetching two main projects. One is called GLM. It's a math library you can use for short vectors to do computer graphics-y things. And then there's another one called MGUI that is a UI library that's really convenient to use. Maybe one day I'll do a video on it because it's so awesome. I just love MGUI. Um, sorry, Dear MGUI is the name of the project. Both of these are not projects that you build and install and then reference from an install. So fetch content, um, GLM is a header only library. So I wrote this little function in here just to make some boilerplate not be repetitive. So this fetch project thing is what I wrote. But all it is, is it's a fetch content populate command, which is going to take from a particular URL, it's going to download it and then extract it somewhere. Um, and that's what this command is doing. And then this function is then also just populating a variable. So uh, I don't have to remember basically where I put source there. Uh, just kind of like with a super build, I like to wrap that in a function to make sure things are always consistent. That's what I'm doing here. But really, it's just fetching GLM from GitHub, extracting it, and then the GLM that I'm fetching has a find package config in it. So all I end up doing is forcing uh, CMake to do a find package at the place I just extracted the source, uh, and then you know, you're good to go. So basically, this is just downloading GLM. And then with MGUI, uh, there's a little bit more. Now, the way MGUI functions is that uh, the project expects you to take the CPP files inside of the project, of uh, the, the Dear MGUI project, and you just include those in your uh, executable or your library, whatever, uh, inside your project. And... That works great. Uh, one way that I've automated this is that uh, is to download DRM GUI, extract it, and then create a local library target that includes the right CPP files that I care about. One way to do it could, I, there's multiple ways you can embed MGUI in your project, but the point is, is that fetch content is the thing that is getting the source from GitHub at CMake time. So when you run CMake, um, let me can actually do this now. So we can run CMake on the Inari SDK, and you'll see that this down these downloads happen. Now I don't have the viewer turned on, uh, but you can see GLM got downloaded, and I can turn the viewer on, and now we can see that MGUI got downloaded. And the whole reason for that is because if the viewer is not turned on here, I just do an early exit so we don't get to any of this if the viewer is not being built. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, Header-only libraries that you want your project to go fetch every time you build, that's a good thing for fetch content to go do. The other thing I wanted to show you that fetch content can't do, I know this is making it sound like I don't like fetch content. I I promise it has good value, um, but there's neat things you can do with external project that maybe wouldn't dawn on you if you are only using fetch content. And that would be to run, uh, to actually test your project standalone from within your project. So there's a, a cool project up on GitHub called OWL. It's the Optics Wrapper Libraries. And recently I'm, I made a, a fairly large refactoring of their CMake um, and one thing that came out was being able to test, being able to use OWL uh, from a standalone perspective uh, without needing to have like another parallel build. Just real quick about OWL, uh, the one thing that was a preference of the, the project maintainers was that uh, all, currently all users can only use OWL itself via add subdirectory. I'm hoping to contribute at some point a nice make install experience so you can build OWL standalone and then find package it and everything. But uh, today, the, the, the one thing that OWL does is expect you to use it by doing a CMake add subdirectory on OWL itself. 
However, you can still run CMake and build OWL standalone, and then that's how, how way you can see the examples. And the there's the samples and test subdirectories. Uh, now, one thing that fell out of uh, the refactoring I did was to be able to test run, uh, building OWL as a, as a subdirectory. So what I did is added a test for this under the test directory where I wrote it, this CMake list is standalone. Like you can just straight invoke CMake on this CMake list, um, completely separate and divorced from the root CMake list you'll find in the OWL project. And um, what this does is it it go, looks in a neighboring directory to try to build one of the tests. Um, but it, it, it expects that add subdirectory is the way that uh, we got OWL, and so want to read this. It's just basically add subdirectory on OWL, and then we try to uh, do a standalone build of this many spheres test um, with another add subdirectory to get that test built. So the issue came up of if you're building OWL as a standalone project, this might be in continuous integration, or if you're just building OWL locally and working with it, not in a parent project. What I did is use external project to invoke CMake separately on the OWL as a subdirectory test. And so the thing I specified was sourcedir instead of like a URL or anything. So there's no download phase. And then this just deterministically points to OWL as a subdirectory. And then just like external project does, it invokes CMake, does a build. Um, and then if that built successfully, hey, the build succeeds. And so that was a great little way to test OWL uh, to be to use it as a client library with the way it expects to be used. If you didn't follow any of that, that's fine. Um, my point is, is that fetch content doesn't do anything with a configure, a build, uh, with a install. If you want to do any of those things, external project is the thing you should reach for. So don't do fetch content for the stuff and then run external project on what you fetched just use the basically fetch content is built inside of external project so just go ahead and use that as you would the last thing i'll mention about fetch content is that uh, there might be a time that you just want to reference external data and then have a and have like a, a custom target that's excluded from all and you do make that target and then you download some stuff uh, this is a real common pattern of when if you have test data that's large and you have it live somewhere else, maybe another repository, and you only want to go fetch it when you explicitly say, make, go get me the test data. This is something that was done in Osprey a long time ago. And interestingly, you can build that with fetch content, but there's another CMake module that maybe I'll go into more detail later, but you can check it out uh, just by me mentioning it called external data, similar to fetch content and similar to external project. This is something that you can uh, basically say, Hey, here are some locations like URLs or local uh, mounted directories or something. You basically can say, Hey, go look here um, on this website uh, server somewhere and go look for files of this, this name, and then you can attach it to a target. And then uh, I know in Osprey, this target to go get the Osprey test data. So if you want to, this is downloading images. So Osprey is a ray tracer um, that renders images. And when you want to go download the, the, the golden images to say, hey, did does Osprey work locally for me? Can it generate the images correctly? Uh, this was marked exclude from all. So you say make Osprey test data, then it goes downloads all these images. Um, but the point is, is again, another thing you could build with fetch content, but I think this is better because you get to explicitly opt in to these downloads. And so you don't end up downloading them if you don't want to, if you don't have to. And that's a, a big thing for me. I know with fetch content, you could guard this with a CMake variable, um, but this is yet another way, another tool in the toolbox uh, to use external data as your way of uh, delaying when the download happens or here in this case making it explicit so when you even make the osprey project it'll just build everything and you have to say make osprey test data to actually then go do the downloads of all the the golden images so that that's it that's what i wanted to show you 
external data, fetch content, external project, all useful tools, but um, don't get too hung up on any one of them. Uh, it seems like a lot of you are really deep fans of fetch content, but it really, it's not a panacea. It can't fix all of your problems. Uh, it's just a tool. And if r getting data at CMake time is the right thing for you to do, then yeah, go use fetch content. I use fetch content all the time and uh, yeah, go use it happily. So that's all I wanted to look at today. I hope that this has given you some inspiration as to when you would want to reach for fetch content or when you'd want to reach for external project. They are very similar, but they have slightly different feature sets, so they both have reason to exist. There isn't really a right answer for how you use these tools, but I hope today provided some clarity as to what, which one will be the better tool for the job based on what you're doing in your project. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button below and consider subscribing to the channel and write a comment down below oh, your experiences with fetch content, with external project, your experiences with CMake or programming in general. I'd love to hear from you and hopefully you can encourage others uh, that are, have found their way to this channel on their journey with CMake. And until next time, happy coding everyone.